In this video, I'm gonna show you how to save your favorite vocal mix as a preset inside of Pro Tools. So really quick, just to give you a little bit of background, I've been attending an audio engineering program for the past five months now, and I've been learning so much in terms of just audio in general, but specifically audio inside of Pro Tools, and I wanna share some of those tips and tricks with you completely free. So without further ado, let's get into this tutorial. So I have one of my sessions open right here. Um, it's just a song I've been working on recently, and I have a cool vocal mix right here that I want to save as you can see there are a lot of plugins on here and a lot of different parameters that I would like to save and with vocal presets you can do just that so obviously the very first thing you're gonna have to do is create the mix on the track so as you can see I got my auto tune right here I have a compressor I got an EQ um, all these different plugins right here that are building up this mix also I have my sends right here for time based plugins and stuff like that so you can also save those as well. Um, I think I'm gonna do that. So once you have your mix fully built up in exactly the way you want it, what you're gonna do is scroll down to the bottom of your mix window right here and how you can toggle between your mix and edit window is hold down command and hit equals. That's how it is on Mac. I'm not sure how it is on Windows um, if you're using it on there. But anyways, what you're gonna wanna do is be in your mix window right here, scroll down to where you can see your track names and highlight the track you want to save and how you highlight um, a track is just literally by left clicking it so I'm gonna highlight this one and then what you're gonna do is right click on that nameplate once you right click on it you're gonna have this drop down menu that comes up right here and you're gonna see there's an option called save track preset so that's exactly what you're gonna click right there and then it's gonna bring up this dialog box. Now, it is important that we don't just click OK. There are some parameters that we can edit and make more convenient for ourselves later. So I'm gonna start at the top right here where it says category. It's gonna say Avid at first, I think. And as you can see, I have a different folder right here that says Caleb James Vocal Mixes. This is where I like to save, obviously, my vocal mixes, but you are going to have to create this folder. And let me show you how to do that. So what you're gonna wanna do is go into your finder or file manager, and then I'm going into documents and then Pro Tools. This automatically gets downloaded when you actually download the DAW. So you should be able to find this pretty easily. And if you can't find it, um, you can just search it up as well with the spotlight. But anyways, you're gonna go into Pro Tools and then go into Track Presets and then just right click create a new folder let's name this uh just vocal mixes and obviously you don't just have to create vocal mixes you can create whatever type of track presets you want but usually the ones that i do personally are vocal mixes so now that you have this folder right here um under the track presets it's very important that you put it in the track presets folder because it won't show up if you don't so make sure you go to pro tools track presets and then add a new folder um, name it whatever you would like but that is where we're gonna be saving our track presets to. And you can save it to the Avid folder. However, I think this is just a better way to organize your files because you actually know where you want to save it. But anyways, yeah. So we're gonna go back into Pro Tools here, hit Save Track Preset, and now under Category, as you can see, Vocal Mixes is right there. So we're gonna click that. So that's all you need to know for Category. Next thing down is just the Name Category. Um, this is just what's gonna pop up when you actually go to recall the saved track preset. So I'm just gonna name this Vocal Mix. So you can name that whatever you would like. And then we move farther down, you see there's a couple grayed out boxes here that we don't really need to worry about. The Include Audio in MIDI Clips, I would not recommend checking this because what it's basically gonna do is if you had any audio or MIDI clips on that track already, it's gonna pull those up every single time you recall the track preset on a new track. Even in like a completely new session, it's still gonna save those audio files within that preset and kind of bundle it all up. So I wouldn't recommend checking this because you probably just want the preset, not the audio files on that preset. So I'll leave that unchecked. And then with these tags right here, what you can do, and this is pretty cool, you can type in like the name of the preset you're saving. So vocal mix for me, as you can see right there, it has it. And then if you hit enter it'll save this as a tag and when you go to where you insert your plugins you can just find this in your plugins and it'll just insert the plugins instead of like every single thing on the preset i would recommend typing in the name of your preset in the tags right here and the last thing i would recommend doing before you actually save this track preset is go to track data to recall i know it can look a little intimidating with all these check boxes and everything like that 
but I'm gonna explain it super simple. What this page allows you to do is select what data you want to save on the track preset. So you could go through and read each one of these, but I'm just gonna show you which ones I would recommend unchecking. Main volume and automation setting, I would recommend unche unchecking that. Basically what that is gonna do is if you had a fader down all the way at like negative 15 dB or something like that, and you had this checked, and then you saved that track preset, what it would do is the next time you wanted to load that track preset on, it would bring that fader down to negative 15 every time. So I would uncheck this just so your fader stays at zero when you load up that preset. Pan, that's the same thing. It'll just make the pan go to zero every time. If you uncheck this, that's perfect. Mute, I would uncheck. Main output assignments, uh, you can leave checked. Not really gonna go deep into that. But send volume automation, I would uncheck. Send pan automation, I would uncheck send mute. These are the six I would recommend unchecking right here. The rest of them you don't really have to worry about. But yeah, now we can hit OK. And then I think we're ready to save it. So if I hit enter, we just saved the track preset right there. And so if I create a new track, so shift command N to create a new track, we're just going to do a mono audio track and we're just going to create that. Now, as you can see right here, I have this new track and what I can do to bring up that track preset is exactly the same as how I saved it. I just highlight the track by clicking on the nameplate right here, right click on it. And then under where you click to save the track preset, there's something called recall track preset and it'll open this drop down menu. Then as you can see, we find our vocal mixes right here and then we can go down to the one we just saved, which was vocal mix. So I'm gonna click on that. And as you can see, it brought up all the same data right there, the same plugins, like the auto tune I had, the compressor I had, the EQ I had, everything. And as you can see in the actual EQ right here, it saved the parameters that I changed on that EQ. So that's exactly what we wanted right there because if we're saving a preset, we want it to sound the same every time we load it up. So that's perfect. As you can see right here though, the sends, since we did uncheck the box that was like send volume and automation or whatever, since we unchecked those boxes, it's not gonna save the level that the faders were at before on those sends. So these are going to start all the way down. So you're going to have to redo those um, if you want to. And if you don't want to have to deal with this, then just leave those send automation and volume buttons checked um, in the track data selection or whatever, and you'll be good. But that's just something to look out for. But yeah, everything else should be the same and you should be able to hear the track exactly as you saved it. So I hope this video helped. If it did, I would really appreciate a thumbs up and possibly a sub. If you want to see more videos like this, then comment down below what other tutorials you would like to see. And this really helps me so I can get a better idea of what you guys actually would like to watch and what you guys uh, would like to learn. But yeah, anyways, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.